What's going on guys? I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Welcome back to the channel. So I recently got a new sander and I had to stock up on paper for it. And I didn't want to just float around the shop like it usually does. So I decided to take some time and make this organizer. If you guys are interested in something like this, stay tuned and I'll show you how I did it. First, I had to figure out where the heck I was gonna put this thing. I decided to make it kind of fit around my drill charging station to maximize my wall space. I measured the size of the sandpaper boxes I wanted to store and took some rough measurements on the wall to figure out how big I wanted to make it. I raided my plywood scrap pile and I ended up having enough leftovers from other projects that I didn't have to buy any new materials, which is always nice. I used some 3 quarter inch sanded ply for this and some half inch MDF for the back because I had it laying around. I wrote up a cut list so I could cut everything at one time. Over at the table saw, I set my fence to 7 inches, which will be the depth for the organizer. And then I ripped all the pieces I had to that width. I made a SketchUp model of this, so I'll leave a link to that file in the description below. You guys can go download it, and that way you'll have all the correct measurements if you want to build one of these yourself. While you're there, you can check out the plans for the drill charging station, as well as my assembly table, and some other cool projects. Once I had everything ripped to width, I went over to the miter saw and started cutting the shelves. When you have a lot of the same cuts to make, it's a good idea to set up a stop block. It'll give you a lot more accurate cuts and it goes a lot quicker. I also cut the sides, top, bottom, and vertical dividers to length using the miter saw. From there I moved on to drilling pocket holes in both ends of the right side, vertical dividers, and one end of the left side, as well as both sides of each shelf. Be sure to stagger the holes in the shelves. If you have two that line up while assembling, the screws will hit each other. I'll give you a better idea of what I'm talking about when we assemble this thing here in a minute. Then I could start assembling. I made sure to clamp the pieces I was putting the screws in together so that way it doesn't move when you're driving in the screws. If it's your first time to the channel and you like what you see, I'd really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when I drop new videos. Once I had all the dividers installed, I could move on to the shelves. To get into those really tight areas of the shelves, I use this 90 degree attachment. I love this thing and I use it all the time. It makes it really easy to get into tight spaces. I also got a shorter square bit tip for it as well. I will leave a link to it and everything else I use in the video in the description below for you guys to check out. As I assemble it, you can kind of see what I was talking about with staggering the screws. So you have one kind of further out to the outside, one inside, one outside, inside, etc. on those middle dividers. Otherwise, the screws will hit each other and they'll either break or they'll bust through the wood or whatever else will happen. So just make sure you keep that in mind when you're drilling your holes. Then I turned my attention to the back panel. I thought about cutting a dado in the back so the panel was inset, but then I thought, nah, it's just shop furniture. I laid out half a sheet of MDF and traced around the carcass to give me a reference line. I cut the bulk of it off with the table saw and then I finished it off with a jigsaw. I made sure to cut proud of the line so I had a little overhang around the whole perimeter. Once I had it cut to size, I fitted it on the back and I pre-drilled with a counterseek bit and attached the back with some inch and a quarter screws. So if you guys watch my videos, you know I love using these bits. It's called a trace bit. It has a bearing on the bottom. So it basically uses the carcass as a tracing pattern. 
and then it trims the back so it's completely flush all the way around. It's much easier than trying to trim the back exactly the size of the carcass and making it fit just perfect. It does make a mess though. After that, I went around everything with a 3 seconds inch mini roundover bit just to get rid of all the sharp edges. To mount it to the wall, I just used some 4 inch construction screws and drove those through the half inch MDF back into the studs. This won't have a ton of weight on it, so this should work just fine. I kind of spaced them out around the corners and then put a few in the center as well. All that was left to do now was load it up. I arranged the boxes by grit and type. This is going to be so much better than moving all my boxes around trying to figure out which one I need. If you guys like projects like this, I'll leave another one up in the corner so you can check that out. I really appreciate you guys watching the video. Please like, share, comment down below, let me know what you think of it. And I'll see you guys on the next one.